Hello, hello everyone. This is Carla again. If you are new here, welcome. This is Courageous Carla, a YouTube channel focused on disability representation and advocacy. If you are a returning viewer or a subscriber, welcome. Glad to have you. So today we are going to be talking about the disabilities representation within Downton Abbey, some of the disabled cultural impact of the show. And lastly, I'm going to be doing something new on this channel, even in this series, talking about the disabled population, in particular the physical disabled population, and what similarities or relatability is there to other cultures or populations in general. So let's get started. We have a lot to talk about and I want to get this done as concisely as possible. So, to begin, this series is a series about the Crawley family, which is about the Earl of this house, Lord Grantham. He has a wife, three children, and his mother, the Dowager, is also a very dear member on this show. And the show focuses on the family, this aristocratic family, and it also focuses on the servants of the house in Edwardian England. So that is something that was new and exciting at the time and still is to this day. This is like pre-Bridgerton, but very United Kingdom based. So in terms of the disabled representation, there are a few characters I'd like to bring up. First, I'm going to talk about is the character Mr. Bates. Mr. Bates is Lord Grantham's valet, or as it's pronounced in England, his valet. This person in particular we're seen uses a cane to ambulate or get around. We're given a little bit of background on this character as he is a veteran and actually that's where he met. Lord Grantham is uh, in, in the war and he, but he sustained some injuries. So this character was seen as one that that has struggles with his self-image, with some storyline, some troubling uh, romantic relations. Uh, he's kind of a loner, but he has a good heart, we're shown. And it was refreshing to see a character presented in an imperfect way. Those with a disability are, are definitely multidimensional and were shown it in this character. So that was an amazing job on the writer's behalf. <laughs> now, he, in terms of what he struggles with, as I mentioned, some body image issues and he struggles with his disability. One storyline in particular, in season one, he is in a lot of pain and it's this divulged that he was trying to heal his limp by wearing a brace, maybe an ill-fitting brace that looked iron or metal of some type. And it was causing some severe physical damage to his skin, which does bring up the point about healing and the different end goals for one with a disability. It, sometimes it's the end justifies the mean and the pain that one goes through it is worth it in the end, but sometimes it's not. And this is just really a push to get a few professional opinions on the best course for you and your goals. Oh, and also this character struggles with his position in that job. A valet or valet has many roles that, that are very physical. And we're also shown that his disability or the use of, usage of that cane was not known to Lord Grantham when he came for the job or for the, accepting that position. So it kind of brings up that conversation of should one disclose that before an interview? It's something that is in this culture, in this modern culture, it's it's optional. And I know there's a lot of talk on whether to do that or not. And I don't have the answer. I can just strongly encourage you, viewer, if you have a disability, to really think about what, what's the best for you. And uh, if you don't, you know, to please don't make too many generalizations or stereotypes about a person that may identify as having a disability on a job application or when seeing someone in person. That is the point of this channel is to get rid of those taboos, get rid of those stereotypes and embrace this culture. All right, on to the next character, which is the Dowager Countess, really Lord Grantham's mother in the show. She's a cane user as well, although we're not given too much of a backstory of this, uh, of this character's cane usage. I think it's more for just balance 
but um, again, not given too much information on the background of that cane usage. But she is a character that most viewers of Downton love, love to hear from. Her one-liners are infamous and so humorous. She's shown as having lived a, a long and enriching life and is very opinionated, <laughs> kind of like a typical grandmother. So again, kudos to the writer writing for such a character and kudos to the actress and the actor I've previously mentioned. So just kudos to everyone around, beautifully written, beautifully acted out. And lastly, we're going to talk about Matthew Crawley, the heir to Downton that will take over the earldom. This character was shown as a distant relative, but a male relative of Lord Grantham and is going to take over the house. We're shown this character as an introduction to one that is new to the aristocracy. He's new to all of this and sort of struggles to find his place. But eventually he does find his place and spoiler alert, he does end up with Lady Mary, a beautiful romance. And the end of season one of that show, we're shown that England is at war. So it's the First World War, and this character does go to combat, and that's where he is injured. So we're shown as this character uh, in a wheelchair, wheelchair of that era. So it's really interesting to see the wheelchairs. It was a manual wheelchair, so he had to be pushed or try to push himself. So some of that history, disabled history, was beautiful to see. But he did struggle with being in the wheelchair and his perception and his position in the family. I don't want to give too many spoiler alerts away, but I will say that we're shown his injury as being temporary, uh, not permanent. He ends up walking. And I appreciated that representation as not all injuries are permanent. Not all of those that use a wheelchair are completely unable to walk. So that's another aspect that can be deduced and that I would like to bring up on this channel. So it was a good, some good representation there. I guess I wish the writers would have shown him coming to terms a little bit more with the disability. He was pretty unhappy with being in the wheelchair, but nonetheless, it was representation and it was an accurate reflection. Not everyone is, is comfortable, especially in the first couple of months of being in a different mobility state. Not everyone is comfortable with it and that's definitely understandable. So this is really a plug to make sure you're talking to someone that you trust and love if you're ever having some issues or some feelings around your disability if you're newly disabled or newly using a mobility aid to so please talk to someone that can help you become more comfortable. All right now to the next portion of this video a new series on the disabled and the different population or cultures of people that are that can relate to us or that we can relate to. So for the purposes of this series I would say the physically disabled or the, at least let's say those in generally in general disabled definitely can relate and has some similarities to royalty or let's say to high political figures. I know. Take a breath, wrap your mind around what I just said, but hear me out. To begin, let's just talk about how much we know about let's say royal figures, notable figures, even let's say politicians or even celebrities. We know much about these people. We know so much about them, so much about their personal lives. We see them all the time. And for a disabled person as well, much of our lives, people, people see us and they remember us. Much of our lives are lived out in the public. Let's say some parents even disclose a lot of their children, disabled children's personal lives not always in a negative way, but even just in general, just, just talking. It's, it, many people know a lot about a person with disability. And there's just that visibleness that many people see and want to look at and stare at. And that brings me to my next point. How many people want to just look and stare at royalty, celebrities, political figures. It's just you, you get the stares, you get the looks. Same with at least having a physical disability or using a mobility aid. You're going to get looks and stares in public and people wanting to talk to you for general reasons, sometimes personal, just sometimes just because they're curious. But same thing with royalty, aristocracy, politicians, celebrities. It's very similar. So much in common. Lastly, I'd like to bring up the rules. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, rules, protocol, if you will. And let me give you an example. 
Prince Harry talked about this a lot in his interview with Oprah about the rules that his father and brother have to abide by. He briefly gave a few examples, but there are a lot that you would think that are no-brainers. Like his example of wanting to pay for his own security. He was told he could not. He, he requested it. It went through the decision makers. Ultimately, it was declined. Similarly, Prince Charles originally could not marry Camilla. And why he requested it? It was denied. Those decision makers or because of how it would look, it was denied. And there have been so many other examples of at least romantic relations that just were not able to happen because of what it would look like from the inside looking out and various different scenarios like that. And let's talk lastly about even some of the land and just those rules that in those positions they have to abide by. Yes, the land, what has been fought over for in terms of wars, battles, and many books and so much of history has been fought over land. But once the land was conquered, there's really not much visibility or known about what happened to the land. Well, there were rules made by government or in UK par- parliament about the land. And tying this back to Downton, that is what most of season one was focused on with the fact that main character, eldest daughter Mary, could not inherit any land or property from her family's estate because she was a woman and there was that rule that only male children or heirs could inherit titles, money, and land with a few loopholes. But that's basically what that season and what this beautiful show, that's what it was built on. So she was so frustrated and confused and they were trying to figure out what they could do. So that really does tie into the disabled community as well with the rules in place that seemingly prohibit us from either getting certain funds or I will say titles or even some lands like what I'm going to talk about in a few in terms of the housing industry or the housing market. One more thing, I did want to say that there was a law that was put to Parliament in England called the Downton Lady Mary Law. And it was a law trying to get that rule that prohibited women or female heirs from inheriting titles. That law was trying to change that and get some rights for for women or for young girls. And unfortunately, the law was not passed. So yes, it is still in place. That law is still in place that certain titles cannot be passed down to female heirs. At one point in time in Hollywood, there were so many clauses that actresses had to abide by in terms of how they looked. It's like it would be penalized if they looked a certain way or were presented in a disheveled or unprofessional manner. If they didn't look good, they would almost get in trouble or lose a contract, lose money. I think I've given several examples. Let me give you some examples on the disabled side. Many are not able to be in a relationship because there are laws. Let's say many physically, there were disabled individuals may end up losing money if they get married. If you're on certain incomes, again, if you marry, you lose money. And it's not too much money to begin with. So what do you do? Many people don't get married. They may want to, but they can't. Or... Let's talk about the housing industry. It should be a no-brainer. Some houses should be more accessible and not so many steps, not so tight, not so small, but it's so complicated. It, it, it's too, too hard to explain. And this is where I have to be the verbal prima ballerina I always talk about. <laughs> but it's life decisions that should be so simple end up turning so complicated so quickly to appease so many different people, so many different Aspects of life are not cut and dry or black and white. They're way more complicated than that. Let's talk about, for example, like push buttons. Why aren't those push buttons everywhere? Apparently it's not. It's so not as simple as just putting push buttons. It's legal ramifications. And sometimes it's literally, will it look good and take us away from the aesthetic of the building? So that was a lot. I tried my best to do this as quickly as I could. I appreciate your time so much, ladies and gentlemen. That's the end of this video. I promise this is a new series. We're going to go into more detail and talk about this much more. If you liked it, please like this video. 
comment below what you liked, or even what you didn't like, what you didn't agree with, what you do agree with. Share this video to those you think that would benefit from it and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Lastly, of course, carpe diem, the best way that you can. Thank you. Goodbye.